Hi, I'm Brian Jackson. I'm at CES 2019. Behind me here is IBM's new quantum system. Now, there's a big race on to see who can put the most qubits together and get it to stay coherent so that it actually does computations. But with this system, IBM is saying, we need to think about the components around that system. IBM Q System 1 is the world's first fully integrated universal computer system, according to Big Blue. Its purpose is to get quantum computing out of the research lab and into a commercial environment. Since 2017, IBM has been working on the design elements around its quantum chips. Having the qubits is one thing, but IBM wants to get to the point where the systems that are built around them can be easily upgraded. I spoke with Bob Sutor, the IBM Research Vice President for Quantum Strategy and Ecosystem. He explained quantum computing to me. They are programmed using microwave pulses, very small units of energy of a particular shape that travel down through these cables, they're the ones with the loops in them there, and those are what actually program the qubits, the quantum bits, to execute the algorithm. I'm right with you, Bob. IBM has been working since 2017 to look at the complete system design around its quantum chips. This field is evolving all the time, and when new chips with more qubits get created, you need to adapt the components around them to support that new chip. Also, quantum chips are just really finickety. IBM has to keep these chips at a temperature that's colder than outer space, just to prevent overheating. All it takes is a gust of warm air or a loose electron, and your qubits lose coherence and then you just can't get any computing done. The cube behind me exists for several reasons. The qubits themselves that do the actual quantum computation are very sensitive. So the glass protects the quantum computer and the components from extra disturbances, such as a little bit of extra radiation, or if someone opens the door and a cold gust of wind comes in. Having all of this in a contained space allows us to maintain a constant temperature for the electronics and all the other components. So the systemic approach means we optimize the individual parts and how they work together to provide the best possible quantum experience for our clients. At CES, IBM announced that it's opening a new quantum computation center in Poughkeepsie, New York. It's to be available of the members of the IBM Q network. That consists of more than 40 companies, including technology firms, academic institutions, and national research labs. They'll be able to tap into quantum systems like this through a cloud service. Researchers are exploring all sorts of ways to use quantum computing, but it basically all boils down to two different approaches. Can quantum computing speed up those calculations of what we do today? And there are some promising results there. The other side of this is to say, well, you know, quantum computing is completely different from classical computing. In classical computing, at the lowest level, we, we deal with bits and ands and ors, binary logic. With quantum computing, we're mimicking quantum mechanics. It's a completely different model. Can we use some of these features like superposition and entanglement to look at the data in very different ways to extract patterns out of the data far more efficiently than we can with today's methods. Reporting for IT World Canada, I'm Brian Jackson. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos from the world's largest electronic show. Thanks for watching.